But all those places somebody was telling me they're done. Yeah, they don't have any any of the, those things. And then, I mean, and I never did it. I, I never liked people coming into my hotel room. But most places, if you're there for less than I think it's like four or five days, they don't clean your room unless you ask for it. I went when I drove to Nashville this year on the way back. We stopped in Pennsylvania one night, and we could not find the hotel room. We were like four hours away. We could not find the hotel room. We had already been in the car 11 hours, and we couldn't. We just wiped. On the way there, it's easier than the way back. Right. Oh, we yeah. We found the hotel, and it was packed. As soon as you went in, this place stunk. My wife came out, and she goes, listen, it's the only hotel room in town, and they don't have an elevator, and we're like on the third floor. It was like walking two football fields over there. As soon as you walked in the room, it smelled like you walked into the plaza in Vegas. Cigarettes, you know. The Holy next shit. morning, my wife goes, I'm going down to get breakfast. Like, I wouldn't. <laughs> She's like, no, let's go have the coffee. She went and got the coffee. She threw everything out when she got to the room. It was just everything was unedible. But the hotel we stayed at in Tennessee, I would move into that place. Oh, yeah, what did they have? It was just a great hotel. Holiday Inn Express, owned by Southern Women. Fucking, they had a great breakfast. They had a great dinner spread at night. I mean, listen, you're not going to find stuffed pork chop or mozzarella. You know, it's fucking Tennessee. But they tried. But the breakfast was surreal. Every morning, the breakfast was on point. And there was a couple breakfast spots, and I kept saying, let's just stay here. Because I hate leaving, you know. From over the years of comedy, you got to leave some hotels to get what? Fucking potato chips and a soda? Right. When I started comedy, there wasn't no shit like there is now, Lee, where you go to a hotel room and you're like, ah, you know, well, let yeah. me go upstairs and get ham and eggs and shit. That was dick. Nobody gave you a free fucking breakfast. Nobody. And I've got tons of stories where you got to wake up in the morning, they got free coffee. But you're a comic. You wake up at 11. The coffee's like fucking shoe leather. <laughs> and now you have to leave the hotel to go get something to eat. And that's a nightmare in itself, especially if you don't have a car. Especially if you drove with the headliner or you took a bus up there or something to that effect. And like, what if you did? Because I think about that a lot is like you, like if you're, if you are like surviving on comedy money at like $100 a show you probably can't eat out that much. Like you couldn't order delivery. Like you could, but like if you're making 50, a hundred bucks a show, how are you supposed to eat out for a week or a week? You ever go to 7-Eleven and they got frozen pizzas and TV dinners and frozen chickens? Yeah. That's the life of a comedian. TV right. dinners, those burritos, two of those motherfuckers with a Coke and a bag of Cheetos chili. <gasps> <laughs> it ain't healthy, but you ate. Right. Really hard to think the shit I ate when I was flat broke just to maintain, just to do comedy. And I knew it was bad for me, but I didn't give a fuck. You know, those frozen burritos? Listen, you take those frozen burritos back to your room. You just don't eat them out of the baggie. You put some fucking paste picante on there, a little bit of cheese, maybe some jalapenos. You dope them up a little bit. And they're not that bad in the hotel room when you, you know, when you have 20 bucks left and one joint and, you know, you got to drive two hours. That, that shit all, you know, you, you figure out, you balance out what's important and it's so weird. And then when you do get a good meal, you appreciate it so fucking much on the road. Like there's a guy I'll never forget because the opening night, Thursday night after the show, he'd always take the comedians only to dinner. Oh, that's and nice. The place where he was taking you was already closed. Wow. So you had the restaurant to yourself. The, they knew about it, the family. It was up in Milwaukee. And that, you know, you, I thought about it years later. First off, he, he took you to a restaurant Thursday. Saturday, he cooked for you at the club, barbecue style. And Saturday morning, he took you to breakfast. Wow. <clears throat> the guy tried. The guy that, really tried. That's really nice. Like, but my, And just like for people listening, I think 
and I'm not complaining at all, but at most, like people like uh, a club will order out for you. Like that's not that's not a usual thing to be that involved. I think it was that you know, and now I see years later where the value wasn't it. You know, like you know, I know you guys been traveling. You're on a bus. You're here. You're there. You're eating shit. This place is. It wasn't Dantana's. It wasn't. Uh, but it was like a Milwaukee. It was like a Wisconsin restaurant. They had a lot of stews and everything was thick and thick breads and shit. It was fucking phenomenal. And I went there twice and both times, Thursday night. Let's go. We're going over to this restaurant. So now thinking back on it, it's pretty nice. And for anybody who has a comedy club or whatever, try that. You know, if you're a booker and you're doing a one-nighter and people coming in from out of town, the first night of the show, take them somewhere nice. You know, not, hey, listen, it doesn't have to be a $3,000 dinner. But just the effort. Take us back to your mom's house. You know, I'll eat some home cooking. If your mom, was, makes, if your mom makes a lasagna tray, that goes a long way, and she gives you a piece to go home with. Ooh. When you're a starving comic, are you fucking kidding me? So these are the things you learn as you uh, go along. How was your week last week, comedy wise? Comedy wise, I had a great week last week. I. I did five spots, uh, two were shows, and three were open mics. And I I had a cool week because I I, I was kind of nervous about it. I, I, I think I've told you I didn't really do well in front of bookers before. And I decided to release a clip that I was really nervous about. And so I didn't want to do most of those jokes at these shows with the bookers. Because I was hope you know, if people came out, I didn't want them to think, if I have 10 minutes, they've seen seven of it already. Um, and so I did like completely different sets than I normally do. And they both went great. And so I'm going to hopefully get to do more shows with each with each group. Well, congratulations. As far as the fucking booker's concerned, 